Uh, welcome back, everyone, to the fourth episode of the Tundra Cast. Uh, today, we're going to go over our central overrated and underrated players. And for the first time, we have Mr. Rossi on here. And uh, yeah, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, last episode took a long time, so, you know, we're just going to get right into it. Um, so we're going to start off with Chicago. And uh, my underrated for Chicago um is lucas walmark um you know last year for carolina had a really solid year had um let me put up here he had 25 points in 60 games um was then traded to the shitty panthers um got two points in seven games there um and he's just a, he's a solid third line center um you know he spent a lot of time on the pk in carolina um doesn't get a lot of power point time but offense is not really his thing um, you know, his Corsi was over 50. His Fenwick, I believe, was 52. And uh, for 950k for Toronto, uh, well, I mean, sorry, for Chicago, um, it's a pretty good deal for him to be behind guys like Taves, Strom, and uh, Doc. So I'm going to go with Lucas Walmart. Is Walmart, isn't Walmart still on the Panthers? I uh, know. No, well, yeah, Walmart went to Chicago. Oh well, I did not know that. Otherwise, I, I think would it was me. like a week ago or something. Something like that. All right. Well, I did not know that, but I- I'm gonna go with um, what? Oh, what is this? Name? There we go. Oli Mata. You know what? A lot of people hate on this guy, and some of it is. Oli Mata went to Los I'm Angeles. Holy crap! <laughs> okay, you know what? Skip my thing. I I got no <laughs> idea. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, uh, for my underrated, I'm going to have to go with Calvin DeHaan. Ooh. Uh, no one really talks about Calvin DeHaan. You know, he's never been the big guy on his team. Uh, you know, like with, uh, you know, he's been with, uh, Carolina. He's been with New York Islanders and always there. You know, he was never the big guy. You know, you look at Carolina, you look at New York, and now you look at Chicago. He's still not the big guy there but he's always solid he's always a solid d-man and you know it's something that never hurts to have on your team all right um so for overrated um it was between duncan keith and this player but uh i chose alex nylander the guy's just a flat-out bust by the way and uh i noticed well because my team is shit and they draft butts but um you know, for a former eighth overall pick, 26 points in 65 games isn't the greatest when you're riding shotgun with with um, Patrick Kane or, you know, the brain kit. You know, it's kind of underwhelming. Um, you know, possession-wise, not the greatest. 49 for both uh, Fenwick and Corsi. Um, didn't really do anything in the playoffs either. And, um, you know, at this point, he's probably probably like a fringe NHLer. Um you know, yeah, he's, he just sucks. So, I'm going to go with Nylander. I'm going to have to agree with you. Um, Alexander Nylander never ended up being what he was supposed to be. And people still have faith in him for some reason. Because, I, I don't know, he has a Nylander name, I guess. Uh, but, like, he has not performed anywhere near where he should have been performing. Um, like you said, his possession sets aren't that great. His offensive zone starts aren't that great. His... Goals for and goals against project. Uh, sorry, his expected goals for is thirty two point four compared to his expected goals against, which is thirty four. So, having more on the expected goals against is never a good thing, and that's what he has. So, I just don't. Uh, he's really hasn't turned out what to what they thought he would be, and and the faith that people still have in him is what makes him overrated. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to be the odd man out here. I'm going to say Duncan Keith. Mm. He's, he's got that, he's got that horrible contract that he's signed to. And he's just, you know, he's just aging very, very poorly when it comes to stats. I mean, if you look at the last three years, he's a minus, uh, his points are dropping every single year, you know, and he's just not aging how you'd want someone like that to age and 
you know, you look at, you know, someone else who you could kind of compare Duncan Keith to, if you look at Drew Doughty, both of them relied a lot on physicality, and that's what's dropping off for them. So I don't think Duncan Keith makes a comeback anytime soon, and I think it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. Yeah, not a bad pick. Um, so on to Colorado now. Um, underrated, um, I got Samuel Girard. Um <clears throat> Ash had a really good year for his standards. Thirty-four points in seventy games was a was a plus one. Even though once again I hate plus minus. Um, you know his possession numbers on a very good abs team was average at fifty two apiece. But um, you know the kid's young. He's on a long contract, which I think which I think he brings tremendous value to the team, and uh, he he gets better every year. Um, and this is a guy that. You know, he's on a second pairing of Eric Johnson. Um, I, Gerard doesn't really get any power play time either because McCarr steals that. So he's stuck on the second pair, which, you know, barely gets out there because their top pair is amazing. So, you know, this is a guy, you know, that I can see him gain 40, 50 points just because he has amazing offensive skill. He's speedy. He's physical. He likes to get in your face a lot. And um, this is this is a key contributor for Colorado. So... Um, more people should talk about Gerard a lot more. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you again because Gerard is a big part of their team, and a lot of people don't seem to he gets uh, don't seem to see that because he gets overshadowed by the people on the top pair. Um, in twenty he's twenty one minutes, so he's like around average for what your top four defensemen should be playing. Um, but just the the last four years, he's been um nominated for the Lady Bing, and he's last year he was just seventh, so he's not that far off. Right. Um, I mean, obviously, Lady Bing doesn't really um, dictate how, how good of a player you are, but still. Uh, and with his, with, with regards to his um, possession stats, they got a lot better this year compared to before, so he's definitely improving, and he's still young, so there's definitely more room to improve as well, so He's keep, going to keep on getting better as the years go on, and he's going to be a big part of that Colorado team who has a really bright future ahead of them. Yeah. Uh, while I love Samuel Girard, especially since, you know, we drafted him in Nashville, uh, I'm going to be the odd man out again, and I'm going to say JT Comfer is very underrated in Colorado. <clears throat> Not only because he, he has to compete for minutes with people like... Um, Nathan McKinnon, uh, Nazem Kadri, and Tyson Jost. You know he's got a he's got a bit, he's got so many big names to compete with, and I think just the amount of points he's able to rack up in you know in a year while he's on you know lower lines, I think is very impressive. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so for now, for my overrated. Here in Colorado, I think once again Ira's gonna hate me for this, but um, I got Ryan Graves, who's from Nova Scotia. Um, no, solely sole reason is is because he plays with Kale McCarr in that top line, and like, come on up, he had like a plus forty five in the league. Um, and his possession numbers for you know playing with Kale McCarr, um, very subpar, forty nine apiece, um. I mean, no doubt, you know, he's a good player, but I don't think he's, like, an elite defensive defenseman that Avs fans are saying he is, that NHL fans, you know, are thinking, oh, wow, a plus four, that's insane. Like, I don't see that. Um, that That's heavily boosted, once again, by McCarr. And, uh, yeah, the, that's what I have to say about Graves. Um, you know, I actually had a hard time with this one because uh, I feel like this Avs ah, – sorry – Av's team is like really good, and I cannot honestly find someone that is severely underrated. And you know what? I was the, literally the only person that I could come to was either Ian Cole or Ryan Graves, and I just had to go with Ryan Graves because, like Shay said, he's playing top pair. Um, or sorry, he's playing a lot of minutes, and he's not really performing as to what a a top pairing defenseman would and. I feel as if if you're playing with defensemen that good, whoever it is that he's playing with in Colorado, whether it be um, McCarr, uh, Gerard, he hasn't performed well enough. And uh, I think 
Shay pretty much said everything there is to say about him. Um, he really should be uh, doing a lot more than he is to be able to earn the tag that uh, Avs fans are uh, have given him as a top def- defensive defenseman. So, yeah. Um, once again, I'm I'm the odd man out. My overrated for Colorado is Nazim Kadri. Oh, uh, no. I don't think he's he's as good as people say he is. Uh, I think Tyson Jost and JC Comfort would produce more if they got the you know if they got the minutes he does. Uh, and I you know yeah Nazim Kadri's good, but I you know for me I just I'm not too big on his style of play. And I there's just something about him that doesn't think that I don't think that he's as good as people say he is. And I know he yeah. got a lot of hype from Toronto, but I just don't I just don't really think that he's as good as people say he is. Oh well, well you gotta have to trust me on this one, Rossi, but um uh what's it called? Uh Nazim Kadri is one of those players you hate or you just don't not like at all when he's not on your team, but he loves when he's on your team. Yeah, he loves him when he's on your team and No, I don't even hate Nazim Kadri and I don't even dislike him. I just don't think he's as good as people say he is. Well, well He's he's like first of all his role is an agitator and he doesn't even play that much he's only playing seventeen minutes but I I can kind of see where you're coming from but at the same time he's performed so well in seasons past and he didn't even do that that bad this season either so I'm not really yeah I just I just I just think that if you put like J T Comfer or uh, Tyson Jost in in his in his uh, minutes played I think that they they put up better numbers. Well, the thing is there that Kadri's also been nominated for the Selkie by a couple people. Like, obviously not while he was in Colorado because he hasn't been as great. But back in while he was in Toronto, he was playing a shutdown. He was playing on the shutdown line for Mike Babcock, so. Mm. All right. <laughs> Sorry. That's, good. that's all right. So let's go to Dallas now. Um, underrated. This is a guy that's fallen off a little bit, but I still think um, you know, a lot of the NHL uh, you know, personnel per- – uh, around the league, I'm um, undervaluing him, and that's Radic Fasca. Now, this is a guy that a couple years ago was, uh, I think, almost top five in Selkie voting. Um, oh, he's a guy that can get you 15 to 20 goals a year, uh, 30 points. That's basically, you know, what you kind of want as third line center, a great two-way player who can provide 30 points a season. And uh, once again, a bit of a down year this year at 20 points. But um, well, once again, he's playing his role. His own starts this year were sixty-seven percent. Um, so he was he was a like, shutdown centerman against the league's top guys, and um, I I think that he will bounce back next year. I think a lot of stars players during the regular season underperformed, and some actually got better when the the playoffs were on. Like Fasca had a decent playoffs. He had ten points and uh, sorry nine points in nineteen games. So um. This is a guy that I can see rebounding next year, and uh, I have a lot of faith in him. So I have Radic Fasca. I'm going to go with uh, Dennis Gurianov. I feel like he get. first of all, I don't think he, he gets enough uh, time to play. He's only playing like 13 minutes, which I think is crazy for someone with this much skill. And in that 13 minutes, he puts up 29 points in the 64 games he's played. He's a 20-goal scorer. Uh, so I uh, – he doesn't get enough time, and his offensive zone starts when he starts in the offensive zone. He's got the puck like sixty percent of the time. Like as a center, that means he's getting good faceoffs. Which let me try to find it. Faceoff stats. Uh, wow, um, why is this so hard? There we go. He's at fifty fifty, so not amazing, but still decent. Um, and you know, faceoffs are usually one of those things that come with experience. He was drafted twelfth overall, which I mean. Uh, and but after, right after that, he started to flow under the radar, um, and I think that he still has the potential to be a really, really good player for them, and I think he already is. It's just that people don't really seem to give too much thought to him, and I still think he deserves it because in the time that he's played only 12, 13 minutes, he's put up so many good numbers, and he's been decent defensively, not amazing, but um, it, it that also is something that comes with age and experience. So I got Dennis Green out. 
Um, I have Rope Hints. Ooh. Okay. He's he's not talked about much because you know you got all those you got the centers like Jamie like uh, Jamie Ben and Tyler Sagan and Joe Pavelski in Dallas. Uh, but if you look at you know Rope Hints' stats, he's young and he's already a good he's already a good defensive and um, offensive like player. Like he's someone you want on the ice against you know better lines. If you look at his Corsi and everything. All right, so overrated now. Um, this is between two players, and these are the two quote unquote stars on the team. No pun intended, by the way. Um, and that's. It was between Jamie Ben and Tyler Sagan, and I went with Jamie Ben. Um, this season he had was awful to say the least. Only thirty nine points for sixty nine in sixty nine games for the amount of money he's getting paid. That's just not that can't happen. And once again, his underlining numbers aren't the greatest. Just fifty fifty subpar. Um, even in the playoffs, um, he had such a slow start to the to the playoffs. I think in the first 10 games, he only had three points. You know, he started getting better against the series in Tampa, but too little, too late. Um, you know, and ugh, there's still like four or five years left on that contract. It's going to be, it's going to be a bad one, especially with the style of play he ha he plays, you know, he's a power forward and um, their bodies uh, wear down so quick. So um, it was tough between this and Sagan, but I think, but I, I have to choose Ben. I'm going to go with the other one. I'm going to go with Sagan. Um, Sagan's on a horrible contract if he keeps playing like this. He's playing. He's basically making Jack Eichel money, and he is not even close to performing at that kind of level. He's only at 50 points in 69 games as a $9.850 million guy for the next, what was that, six years? Seven, seven or years. Seven years. Seven years, sorry. Um, and... His Corsi, his possession stats, they're all, they're hovering around 50, which is supposed, which is just average. And as a player with that much skill, he's shown it in the past. 50 is just not good enough, and he's not playing great defensively either because when it comes to defense, his own starts, he's below 50, which, I mean, as a if, if you're supposed to be a top-line center, you want to be at least decent at being good in your uh, – sorry, you want to be at least decent in your defensive zone. And – uh, being below 50% as defense's own starts is never a good thing. And even in his offense's own starts, he's just about at 50. So um, he really has not performed that well this year. Uh, he uh, he may, he may dropped down a lot from his la last year where he had 80 points in 82 games. Um, so I feel as if he's getting way too much overpaid. There's way too much uh, term on that contract. And... He has not performed at all to that standard. All right. Um, I was going to be the odd man out again because I was originally going to use, I was going to say John Klingberg for overrated. How, however, at the last minute, I have, I, you know, I, I was looking at it more a bit earlier and I will have to agree with Shay. I think that Jamie Ben is very, very not gonna age well and I think he is a bit overrated. Okay, so I guess we can go to Minnesota now. Um so for underrated, um I it was hard between these two players. One of them was Fiala, but I think everyone knows how good Kevin Fiala is now. So I'm gonna go <clears> with Jared Spurgeon. Um one of the best shutdown def uh, defenders in the league, one of the one of the actually better offensive players, in my opinion, even though the stats don't show it. Um, you know, analytic guys love this guy. Um, I mean, he does everything well. You know, he can play the top pair of Ryan Suter and wants to shut down the team's oppositions. He can play on your power play and produce sit pretty well there. Like, you know, this is a guy in the past three years have gotten Norris votes. And I still think he's going under the radar. You know, I think that, you know, once they ship out a lot of those guys in Minnesota because they're going through a rebuild, um, more people are going to see how talented Jared Spurgeon is. And I think this is the year that he can get top, he can get top five Vezina votes. Uh, no, not Vezina, uh, Norris votes. 
solely because, um, you know, he's elite at everything he does. He's a top 10 defenseman in this league. And, uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Uh, Jared Spurgeon, is, he played amazing this year. His possession stats are awesome, 52% Corsi. Uh, and Fenwick, he's at 52% pretty much as well. Uh, his, he's not great in the uh, when it comes to like offensive zone starts, but like Shea said, he's still above average. I'd say, I'd say 32 points is pretty solid. He probably would have hit 40 if they'd gone to an 82-game season. Uh, and defensively, he's really solid. Um, he, on a many other teams, uh, like like Shea said, Minnesota's not that great, but on many other teams, he'd be playing a top pairing role with a real with, the, with whatever star defenseman a team has, and he'd be shutting down top lines and top pairings on other teams, and he'd do it well. Um, uh, the thing about Spurgeon is, you know, he never re- he kind of broke out. What well, his probably breakout year was a lot of time ago, right? It was, oh wow, I'm just looking at it now. It was probably like 2013, 2014, and no one has noticed him since since then. He's got, like Shay said, he's gotten Norris votes, he's gotten Bing votes like every single year, All Star votes, and yet he's flown under the radar so much. Even in Minnesota, not people, not many people talk about this guy. So he he deserves a lot more respect. Um, he's like taking top pair minutes for them, and he's doing it really well. Um, I'm gonna have to go with the other, not talked about defenseman in Minnesota with uh, Jonas Brodin. Yeah, he he's not talked about really much like Jared Spurgeon, and he kind of puts up a similar amount of stats. So I think I think like Brodin is like right up there with Spurgeon. Like, I think that the one-two punch, if Seattle doesn't take one of them or something, I think that once Suter is gone, I think it's Brodeen and Spurgeon on that top pairing. All right, not a bad choice. Um, for overrated, I got a defenseman here. And uh, cancel me all you guys want, but um, I'm going to go with Matthew <laughs> Dumba. <laughs> um, I mean, a couple years ago, I, a couple years ago, um, he was actually solid. You know, he was young. He was like 22, 23 at the time, coming to his own um, 50 points. But ever since then, he's hit a rock. Um, I mean, just look at his past, like, five years or so with his giveaway to take away ratio. Um, and even his, like, uh, numbers aren't aren't great. Um, like uh, the both of you said, uh, Spurgeon and Brodeen have – both have great stats, great uh, defensive numbers. Uh, Damba is like at a 48 for both Corsi and Fenwick. Um, he's starting 50% in the, Z zone, in the D zone, which I don't think helps his cause. And uh, yeah, I think Minnesota should try to trade him to beef up the forward court because, uh, you know, yeah, they added Capers off, but that, that core needs more of a shakeup. You know, Fiala needs help, Capers off needs help, Rossi's not coming in in a couple of years. So uh, I think they should package their right hand defenseman to bring in something. And he, you know what? He might have value around the league. Um, it's kind of hard to find right hand young defensemen on the block nowadays. So uh, yeah, he's a class act. I love Matthew Dumba, but. Um, I, I, I do think he's overrated slightly. Yeah, you know what? He, he is a good guy for sure. Um, we, we saw that. Um, but he, he really hasn't performed. His course he's been down. His Fenwick's been down. His He hasn't scored as much as he as he used to. Um, I, I feel as if it was, like, I think it was even as soon as last year where people were touting him to be a top defense offensive defenseman last year because he was injured for a lot of it yeah sadly but 22 points in 33 games that is really really good um and um he was touted to go to a lot of teams who needed defensemen the Leafs the um I'm not trying to think of another one was he gonna go to were there rumors for Edmonton too I feel like that was like years ago okay yeah we're talking about like four years ago or so all right so well that, that, no, I'm dumb, but anyways, yeah. So, uh, but I don't know if he has a lot of value anymore because three years and six million for someone this performing like this, it really isn't that great. 
and you know especially if the cap's freezing and be, and a lot of contracts are coming up uh, around the league I, I don't know if Minnesota's going to be able to move this contract especially and it sucks because like Shay said they need assets up on the front line or sorry on forward and and ideally Dumbo would be that kind of guy that you trade but I don't know if his value is up uh, that high anymore. I'm for my overrated. I'm gonna have to say Matt Zuccarello. Oh yeah, he's 33 years old. He's had he's got a six million dollar cap hit, and he's just I don't think he's what they thought he would be in Minnesota. Like, I think that they thought he was going to be the person to take, uh, to help Fiala take the next step or something, but he's just not been that. He only had 37 points in, in the 65 games he played last year. And, you know, he's been, he, he was uh, Dallas and New York, he was injury prone. And, you know, like in the 2018 19 season, he got hurt. With that uh, leg injury, I think it was. Yeah. And to me, he hasn't seemed like the same player since. But who knows? We could we could still see a bounce back from him. But as of right now, that that six million dollar cap hit at thirty three years old with that kind of production, I don't think. I just think he's a bit overrated. All right, not a bad choice. Um, on to Nashville now. Um, <laughs> Ross is going to be happy with my selection here. I got uh, Victor Arvidsson. Uh, I mean, I, it, did, I did too. Yep, me too. This, this is a guy that, I mean, before last season, had 34 goals in 58 games. I mean, this, the, the guy can score 40 easily. I mean... And you just look. He at, was on track for 50 goals in, a, yep. in that season, and my big thing was is he he was on track for 50 goals that season, and he's not talked about as a 50 goal scorer. I mean, uh, I mean, you just kind of prove my point there too. And you know, I also look at his defensive play. Um, every year, um, besides this past season, um, he's always uh, uh, take he always uh, takes away the puck more than he gives away, which is always a positive. For a winger. And I mean, his possession stats are actually really, really good. 55 for Corsi, 55 for Fenwick, amazing, underrated. Um, he was injured this past season, and when he's healthy, I can see him getting 30 to 40 in a full year, maybe 50, um, like Rossi said. Um, I mean, he broke out during that playoff run season. He had 60 points in the playoffs, was phenomenal. And uh, yeah, he, he's definitely. He's definitely going to regain his form. Yeah, Arvidsson's yeah. definitely a dark horse, especially with with Forsberg. Yeah, he's he's up there. He's going to hit forty goals. I feel at some point in his career, you know, and he's still got a lot left. He's only twenty seven. Um, like Shay said, he's a course he god. He does. Uh, he has the puck so much, and he controls it. And and he's also a really good two way player. He's been. Uh, what's it called? Nominated for the Selkie once in his career, but that was a while ago. But still, it, it, it his uh, giveaways, giveaways have still been really good. Um, and think about how rare that is for a winger to be nominated for the Selkie. Oh just, yeah, it does not happen a lot. So, uh, I do uh, believe that he he is overshadowed way too much. Um, he could be doing. A lot more like he's only getting pay- played 16 minutes a game which i feel like that is absurd you should be playing uh, way more uh, yeah he was the the thing was is Iverson has even said himself that uh he had he struggled this year we never saw Arvidsson at 100 percent. i mean he was dirty hit by bertuzzo early on in the season and we never just saw him come back especially with that bad back injury all right there all right Okay, so um, overrated. Um, for me, um, I've kind of noticed this over the past couple of years with this player. And even when he signed the contract, I was like, I don't know if, if I don't even, I think it's kind of overpaid. Um, and it's Ryan, Ryan Johansson. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
let's be honest, like a lot of, if not most, national predators this year underperformed. Um, there's a, there were a couple of great. Um, there they were there was a couple of good players like Roman Yossi, of course, probably a top three, top two no, uh, defenseman in the league. Um, I mean, UC Saros really stepped up this year in that. But, um, you know, after that Duchesne signing, I was really hoping that Johansson can, uh, you know, face, can actually, pr- in, uh, what's it called, improve his uh, production because Duchesne was going to get all the top um, pairings, which would leave Johansson with the easier competition. But he just fumbled the back. 36 points in 68 games. Um, I mean, he's getting paid, what, $8 million, And that's how what that's He's not, getting paid the same as Duchesne. Nine mil or eight mil? Eight mil. Eight mil. Eight mil. Yeah, like it, that's a lot of money. Um, the thing is, he's still kind of young, 27, 28 years old. But uh, I mean, this past season just w- wasn't good. Um, but you know, the the positive side is that his uh, analytical numbers are still decent, 56 for both Corsi and Fenwick. But uh, he needs to improve that offensive production because that that contract could look ugly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it uh, you look at a lot of comparables like uh, players getting the same amount of points and uh, goals or whatever in the season, and you could see them. I don't know William Nylander. He's a eighty point guy. Well, he would have been an eighty point guy. Uh, he's getting paid six point nine million. Johansson's at eight million. I'm looking at other players too. Where you have, um, God damn it, what's his name? I don't for, forget it. Forget. It. I, I'm not even gonna try. No, I'm too fried. It's way too late. Uh, but yeah, he he really has underperformed. I, he, like like Shay said, I don't even know if it was worth it when he was signed. But it, now it's looking worse and worse uh, as the years go on, and uh, they're gonna be stuck with that for the next five years. And I don't know if they're gonna be able to deal with it. To be honest, because uh, Forsberg. He's not. He's a couple years out, um, and he's gonna want a lot of money because he deserves it, frankly. So, it it, it it's tough for them. But I think Forsberg is gonna be like a Nathan McKinnon situation where he takes less than what he's actually deserved. Maybe I can see that. Maybe, but like still. Uh, uh, but yeah, I feel he could still bounce back. But I don't know if he'll ever be worth eight million because I don't think he ever was, to be honest. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm going to have to say that it was a hard choice between, you know, our two big contracts with uh, Matt Duchesne and Ryan Johansson. And Matt Duchesne gets a lot of flack for being Matt Duchesne, frankly. But he was the second highest producer with Nashville this year. And I think that gets overshadowed by his, um, by that playoff run where he just got unlucky. Uh, but I'll have to agree with Ryan Johansson that $8 million contract is not looking good, especially since Duchesne has joined. I'd love to see a revival of the 2017-2016 uh, Jofa line production that they had. But I think that the only way Johansson bounces back is if um, is if he's able to uh, help Tolvin in grow more or if he's able to you know reignite with the jofa line all right so on to st louis now um pretty easy choice for me here this is uh david perron um i mean he gets it looks like he gets better for age um you just look at his stats first of all with vegas a couple years ago 65 points in 70 games uh year after that was st louis uh, 46, and this year he has six. He had 60 points. Um, once again, like we said with Arvidsson, he takes away the puck more than he, than he gives it away, which is a huge positive. And uh, I mean, his advanced analytic n- code numbers are outstanding. 60% for both Corsi and Fenwick. Like that's extremely high. But you know, you look at the previous years, and it's about on par where it usually is. Um, the season before that. Both of us at uh, his Fenwick and Corsi was at 56. And, um, you know, he is aging, but uh, I mean, as long as he's producing the way he is, 
Um, St. Louis should be, I wouldn't say cup contenders, but playoff contenders for many years to come. And, uh, yeah, more people should really talk about Perron because he r- really went under the radar this year. Yeah, he like like Shay said, he gets better and better every single year. Um, but you know, uh, uh, this was definitely his best season so far. Uh, he his course numbers are amazing. He k- keeps the puck a lot, and he's decent in his defensive zone. Um, like not amazing, but still, it it comes with time. Um, and. Uh, I feel like he could be playing for a while, to be honest, because if he keeps on his upward trend, then he's going to become a prime player in this league. Uh, to be honest, he's already a prime player in this league, and I feel like it could keep on getting better. Um, I don't, and he's only at four million for the next two years. For someone who's hitting sixty points in uh, seventy-one games, that is really good. That is a steal. So, yeah, yeah, I don't think there was any doubt about this one here. Yeah, I mean, for my underrated, I'm going to have to go with Colton Pareko. He's a great two-way defender. He's 27 years old. And the thing is, is Colton Pareko is good enough to be a number one defenseman on a team. But he's had to play with, you know, he's he's played with people like uh, like Alex Petrangelo. And now coming up is... Um, is uh, Tory Krug. So I just think it's because he's never been in the limelight. Oh, yeah, that's fair. All right, so for uh, overrated now for the Blues, this is a guy that, I mean, for the last four years, um, I mean, like four years ago, he was supposed to be touted as a, as a consistent 40, 50 point score, a uh, goal score, sorry. Um, I mean, he's getting paid like eight, eight and a half, and I know he's been through some injury issues, but I mean the the production we've seen in the last couple of years just hasn't been it. And this is uh, Vladimir Tarasenko. Um, I mean, when he first came to the league as a 23, 24, 25 year old, I mean, look at this: thirty seven goals, forty goals, thirty nine goals. And each of seasons, uh, he had seventy three, seventy four, seventy five points. Um, but I mean, after after he signed that huge extension, it's been all downhill. Hill. The year after that, 33 goals, 33 assists for 64, uh, 66 points. The year after that, 33 goals, 34 assists for 67 points. Uh, last year, only played 10 games, injured 10 points. Um, and was injured again in the playoffs. So, um, I mean, he, two, he had two huge shoulder, shoulder injuries in the past year, which is concerning enough. But the fact that after he signed that huge extension, his um his production's going down, um, and uh, you know it's not a good look, especially it's a sense that uh you know St. Louis has so many guys to resign. They could have had, you know, a bit of wiggle room to sign guys like Petrangelo and Dunn. Um, it's a bit much, and uh, I mean there's a couple of guys that are almost passing him down a depth chart. I think just because. You know, the guy's only played 10 games in the past uh, year. And once again, um, his production is slowly dipping. So um, whenever he's healthy, 100%, um, you know, let's hope that he can become the young 23-year-old he he was back then because um, I remember the hype around him. And, uh, yeah, it just hasn't really – he hasn't really been the same since. I'm gonna have to agree with you, Shay, because like since he had that 40 goal season, steadily been dropping off. Uh, two really good seasons there. He had heart. Um, he had heart. Um, uh, what's it called? Votes. Uh, he had Selkie votes even at one point. Uh, but then after that, it's been slowly dropping off, and uh, his course he's been dropping off too. Um, or sorry, it's been uh, it went up last year, but then once again it dropped. Uh, so I feel like. With seven point five million for the next three years, uh, and what um, St. Louis could have had instead of Tarasenko, or or if Tarasenko was signed for cheaper, then it's a lot to lose, really, for someone that really hasn't put up amazing number or who's put up like subpar numbers uh, lately in, in his last like three 
two or three seasons, um, he could definitely be doing a lot better. Um, I'm going to have to go with Jordan Bennington. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Um, Bennington had a good, uh, you know, first year in the league. You know, he, he did very well, especially in the playoffs. I think he's the first ever rookie goaltender to win all 16 games in the playoffs to win a cup. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but this year, you know, this year in the playoffs, he was just exposed and the numbers do not look good if you look at, you know, his numbers. And it's not even like, you know, he has the excuse of what other people might have, like Mackenzie Blackwood, like, well, the team in front of him is garbage. <laughs> it's, it, no, I mean, Bennington has a legit defensive core in front of him. And in the playoffs, he went, he went 0 and 5 with a 472 goals against average with a with an 851 save percentage and that's just not what you know what you can lead you to the to the cup or even far into the playoffs right all right so on our last team now uh this is the jets um for underrated it was between two players once again um Nikolai Ehlers and this defenseman and the defenseman I chose was uh Neil Pionk, yeah. um, this, is, this was a guy that uh, back in, I believe, 2019 was traded along with a first for Jacob Truba, and um, little known fact, that first became Vili Hanla, so really good defenseman prospect there for Winnipeg, but um, Pionk really just outshone Truba. Truba had a, a horrible year, I believe he was a minus, um, and I, I believe he had like 27 points for the Rangers, which... I mean, with a team like with a team with Artemi Panarin, and Tony D'Angelo, Adam Fox, all that offense on the back end as well, um, disappointing on his end. And for Winnipeg, um, they really needed a defenseman to step up besides Josh Morrissey because in that off season they lost Tyler Myers, they they lost Big Buff. Um, I'm probably forgetting someone in along that list, but um, they basically lost like three huge defensemen that year. Um. And they needed someone to step up, and P- Pionk did that in 71 games, basically the whole year. Um, he had 45 points. And, um, you know, he was at right shot uh, on the power play with guys like Shifley, Ehlers, Line, and Connor. Um, and his analytics were actually really solid. Um, 55% for Fenwick and Corsi compared to his 41% in the Rangers. I think that just tells you how bad – defensively the Rangers were um, a couple years ago. And, uh, yeah, I can see him breaking out soon with 50 points if we get a full year soon. And uh, and right now he's on a steal of a contract, two, three mil for this year. So, uh, yeah, look up for, for uh, Neil Pionk in the future. I'm going to agree with you, Shay. He's still got a lot of room to get better. He's, he's only 25, and... He's been he performed really well this year, especially um, years before that he wasn't amazing, but you know what he wasn't on a great team either. Um, uh, he's, he's an analytic darling. Um, he's shouldering huge minutes for them, twenty three minutes a night. Um, I feel as if uh, the Winnipeg Jets they got screwed obviously when they lost all those defensemen and they needed someone to step up. Truba wasn't doing the job that got rid of him. They uh, at Morrissey. Uh, he's the like literally the only other guy they had, and Neil Pionk ended up outperforming Morrissey too. I think so. He's been, he was their best defenseman, and no one really talks about him. Uh, so I I think he deserves a lot more respect because he because he like carried them. I think. Um, for my pick, I'm gonna have to say somebody who I feel is more underrated than Nikolai Ehlers, I'm going to have to say Kyle Connor. Um, Kyle Connor's 23 years old. You know, he's a, he's got a lot of growth still left of him, in, uh, left of him. And he's just a great points man. He had 73 points in 71 games this year. Almost 40 yeah, goals, uh, too. Yeah, he would have hit 40. Yeah, Connor had a, he had a huge breakout year. 
Um, especially towards the end is when he started getting hot. I think he had like 10 goals in the last six games or something like that. Um, for overrated, I got, I actually have a winger. Um, he's been getting a lot of, uh, crap dumped on him as of late. And, uh, I mean, this year he didn't really do that any justice. Um, this is Patrick Laine. I mean, the first two years, his kid was unbelievable. The rookie year, 64 points, 36 goals. Amazing. Next year after that, hit 44, got 70 points. That's what you want to see from a young sniper. Um, I mean, at, at that time, I was like, okay, this kid could hit 50 consistently. Um, but this it hasn't been the case since. Um, the year after that, 30 goals, 19 assists for 49 points. In the abysmal year, I'm pretty sure that was the same season. He had like a five-goal game. Yep. Um, and this year, 28 goals, 35 assists, 63 points in 68 games. So improvement there. But um, the thing about Line, and this is where his nickname, Lazy Line, comes from, is that he doesn't back check. He doesn't play defense. And this is why he's been in trade rumors lately. Um, you know, it seems like that he does, he's in, he's always in a disagreement with Paul Maurice. Um, and, I mean... <sighs> I really like Lyon's game. I love goal scorers. I love I love it when he gets the puck on his stick and he one times it in. But I mean, the past two years has just been a, a trend in the wrong direction. Um, I mean, when he came to the league, he's supposed to be a forty goal scorer, and now he can barely barely hit thirty. Um, and for some reason, it, he's just been getting worse. So. Um, he's not, I think he get, he's getting paid around 7 mil. He's not worth that contract. And, uh, yeah, well, I got Lining for my pick. Um, yeah, it's got to be Lining, right? Um, uh, he signed a big contract. Uh, so he's almost 7 million, uh, 6.75 million. It, it, after that really good season that he had, um, I feel as if, I don't know exactly what happened to him, but he just started stopped caring really. Like his first, his rookie season, he had fifty five giveaways, but he, uh, he still had forty three takeaways, so it's closer there, right? And then after that, fifty one to twenty nine, forty eight to twenty eight, fifty seven to forty one. So it's 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 horrible. He's not trying. He's giving away the puck. Um, he isn't scoring as what he did in his first two years. Uh, and. Like like Shay said, he's always getting into a disagreement with his coach. And I'm just looking at his expected goals against it's 40, 54.8, sorry, to his expected goals for, which is 44.7. That is way too big of a gap. I don't think that uh, Line, uh, I don't know if it's, it's that he doesn't like playing hockey anymore or just he's got the money so he doesn't care. Uh, but he hasn't been trying hard enough. And your star player, this guy was supposed to be their best player, should be trying hard in day hard day in day out because at one point you might have to carry your team and if he's not back checking or like playing defense then it that's not it doesn't help his case at all so i i feel like his next contract really isn't going to be actually you know what i take that back i feel like he's going to get more in his next contract because people yeah. still think he's going to be amazing but that's why he's overrated yeah, I have to agree, Patrick Laine. I don't like the, the cap hit. I don't like the fact that it doesn't seem like he's trying. And, you know, I I think if you're the Jets, you want to get rid of Laine as, you know, even if it's for, like, only, like, a second round, a second round pick, you just want to get rid of it because of that cap hit. Yeah. yeah. That cap hit is not good. Um you know, especially when instead of having Line on that first line when he's when he doesn't have what you know it should be, you could have Kyle Connor, yeah. Nikolai Ehlers, and uh, and Mark Shifley, but you don't have that. You have, you know, you got Line taking up ice time when, as you guys say, it doesn't really look like he cares. Yeah. Yeah. All um, right. So, um, Ari, do you have do you have something to say? Yeah, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say I'm so happy we cut this one down. Yeah, um, at least it wasn't two hours like the last one. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks uh, guys for watching, and stay tuned for next time.